We will now learn how to be a leader in 2023 with Jonathan Schroyer, Chief Innovation Officer at Arise Virtual Solutions. Welcome to the show, Jonathan. Thanks, Marcy. It's an honor to be here and it's exciting to talk about this important topic in 2023. It absolutely is. And I think we would, most of us out there would love to understand this and, and maybe work on being a leader. So tell us, what's the difference between a boss and a leader? Well, I mean, I think when you when you think about a boss, it's somebody that tells you what to do, perhaps gives you a little bit of guidance, um, but it, I kind of think of it more of like micromanagement. I did a post on LinkedIn about this pre previously of a portrait of all the folks that wanted to be micromanaged and there was nothing in the picture. And, but when you think about a leader, it's somebody that inspires you, somebody that understands you, and there's some that wants to help you reach your full potential as a human and as a professional, whether it's working with them or whether you know you have to move to the next opportunity to, to find that potential. I think that's the difference. It's someone that really cares about you and wants you to be successful and helps you to get there. So how can people be a leader or what sets a leader apart from a boss? Like you so said, you've been talking about this and I think that a lot of times we have struggles with our boss and how can we work better with a boss and also find a leader in our lives? Well, I think it's super interesting. Uh, I had a, a great career coach who I've used for like 15, 20 years. And he always says, lead where you are. Everyone's a leader, regardless of whether you're titled or not. Mm -hmm. And I think the general principles of leadership that I think everyone should think about three different areas. I think one is empathy. Oftentimes we forget that human beings are who is delivering the work on a day-to-day -day basis. And we try to focus on results. And, and that may be good for the bottom line of the company, but it's not necessarily good for the person who's doing the work and the long-term likelihood that, that person is going to stay with you. So I think empathy is the first one. I think the second one is with all the different things that are happening in the world right now, having an understanding of what emotional intelligence is and mental health and how you can help people balance, or I like to call it work-life work harmony, balance their work life with their personal life and help them to be successful. And in some cases, encourage them to take time off so that they can find that balance, find that peace that they need um, so they can come back and, and be 100%. I think the third thing to think about, and I think there's a big difference between a leader and a boss, and also where you can kind of lead where you are, is to, to really help each person in your organization understand the purpose that they bring to the organization and how that purpose makes an impact for the company's success as well as for their own career growth. Yeah, well, absolutely. And we all play different roles and they're all needed and finding the strengths because I think we all have our strengths and weaknesses and it's building on the strengths and, and using that from each one of our team players. So let's talk about the leaders and what do they need to do and what do they need to know to succeed as a leader? I think the two or three things that I would say in this area, especially in this modern age of leadership with Gen Z and millennials, I think the first thing that they need to understand is going back to a point I made earlier about humans do business with humans, people do business with people. And so it's really important to understand like, how do you engage? How do you inspire? And how do you help a person um, be their best selves and to be successful, to overcome any challenges that they may face? but also to celebrate them and help them to take credit for the work that they do. I think the second thing to, to really think about in this area is really to understand how do you connect the work that people are doing on a day-to-day -day basis to their overall success and the story of where the company's going. Uh, and I think that brings a lot of satisfaction and a lot of excitement in, into that into that person's role and what they're doing. I think the third one, which you've touched on, which I really love, is building a team that complements each other. So you don't necessarily need to hire A plus players in every position. Oftentimes you may accidentally hire an A plus jerk. Uh, but yeah. what, you, what you do need to hire is complementary people that can support each other, that, that can help you build the right culture, and that can ensure that on a day-to-day -day basis that trust 
and that relationship and that communication is happening so that they can all be successful together. Yeah, that's incredible. And, you know, to be a boss is, is hard and to be a leader is hard. And I think that there are those that are gifted in that area and those that have learned a lot that have helped them in those roles. Yeah. But maybe if you're a boss and you realize that you're kind of struggling to be that good team leader, uh, mm -hmm. to get the best results from your team, the people below you, how could they help themselves to be a better leader? Well, I think the first thing a, a boss that's trying to transition to become a leader, it's really understanding what their people do on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. and who they are and how they can help marry the two together for them to have the greatest success. And I think oftentimes, you know, as I noted earlier, a boss tends to be like, you know, this is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to do it. Go do it. Right. Whereas a leader will check in with them occasionally. We'll, we'll see how things are going. We'll support them. We'll provide extra, extra kind of support in communication and so forth. So if you're trying to do the transition, the, the one easy hack might be the wrong word, but the one easy hack to use is like, how often do you check in with your people? And then how do you respond when they have challenges? And if you check in often and you respond with mentorship and coaching, patience and empathy, then that's going to be a great response to help you build that the leadership quotient or acumen that you need. Yeah. And you know what? Just to be a leader in general, not just in the office, we're, we're leaders in so many ways in our lives. Mm -hmm. So we could really learn a lot uh, from what you have shared. So where can we find more information? Uh, so you can find me out on LinkedIn. I'm at Chief CX Officer. Uh, I'm also, I use that same handle for Insta, for TikTok, uh, for YouTube and Twitter. Uh, but I love to talk with folks who are aspiring leaders, you know, folks that are, are great leaders that want to share their best practices or just catch up and talk about what the future of leadership look, looks like. So feel free to reach out to me at any time. All right. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for coming on Wake Up with Marcy and sharing such great advice. Thanks for the time today. Have a great day.